continued episode so yes we're back here again hopefully concluding what happened and what's left of Edith Finch obviously the last episode that we watched was about little baby Gregory and how he unfortunately drowned in a bathtub obviously prior to that we found out what happened to Sam what happened to Walter Barbara and indeed Molly as well we have found out what happened to a lot of these characters and it's a real shame and extremely disturbing how they all just came and went as they did so here's hoping that we do continue down this quite troublesome and indeed harsh reality of what happened to the family of Finches so the next person to find out about is Gus. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our to turn these words round. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Damn. Oh no, I've got a bad feeling about this one. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met me. We don't need a stepmom. Have that, yeah. Take the take, take it. Uh, so this is what the um, totem was for. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here, but Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <coughs> Rebellious team, dang. appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Ah, uh, this also shows why... The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Well, apparently this kite is as strong as, uh, strong as the gods themselves. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. I wish that. Oh, well. Oh, no. Well, you managed to survive that. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. Oh. But I didn't. Until we found you. I'm guessing he was a... Dang, that's a bit harsh. She never talked about him because Mom told me if I was a boy, they were going to be like Gus. That's quite a... Um... Shoot. Wow. And his... Uh... So I'm guessing they found him impaled by the... Uh... The tent.
Raise flag at 7.30, breakfast at 8, quiet time at 11, dawn, soup, trash, Gus, Mop, Mo, Yard, Greg, be a pain. <laughs> Routine jump rope, 100 times, jumping jacks, 150, push ups 100, crunches 100, run to the mailbox and back. Dang. Talk about having some serious regime in the morning. I know a lot of people that do that. She spent a summer building houses in Kolkata, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Find the ways to teach critical thinking. History, math, and science. We're helping to create safe places. I'm guessing we'd. Oh, right. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born here. Oh. Oh, definitely going down that way. When my dad died. I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Edith, Milton, and Lewis. And to see kids in the house again. Mint, thyme, sage, and basil. Nice little homegrown. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. Just building on top of the top of the house and just keep going up. Of course it wouldn't. Hmm. Yeah, a little laptop there as well. So the art style for this was is just as good as it was is, as it is in Soma. Even though I'm pretty sure there are two separate entities. Okay. Need to be careful. Wow. Quite the artsy person, Milton was. I'm not gonna lie, this is an, quite an impressive kid. Wow. Well, that would make Milton 28 this year. Well, 29 this year. Shoot. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. impressive that he drew a flip book inside of a flip book I 
was four when Milton disappeared. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Apparently, he disappeared through this door here. But I'm guessing equally. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. That door could have easily been a window that he managed to uh, get out of. Oh, that's a completely waste of time. Oh, things are definitely getting rather uh, rickety. Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until mom got him a job at the cannery. Oh, we're probably not going to uh, go up any higher that way. That's, uh... He lived inside of a boat. How the f to get a boat up here? That's a quite a very peculiar. Um... Very uh, trippy. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Don't we all? Big boy TV though. Dang. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Oh, okay. Rice is literally just slamming he fish through. At the camera, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Oh, no. Ye. Drift. Wonder. Oh. Shoot, this is going to get interesting. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toes. Oh god, trying to do this is insane. It's just the... Oh. And things that have not names. Fishes. I mean, look, this needs to go in there. He needs to go there, over there, this. God, I've, got, I've got a headless salmon just, you know, chilling out over here. That needs to go over there. Shoot, right. <laughs> Back to what I was doing. <laughs> took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself.
but he found something more. Oh no, it's got even more intricate now. This kid's a freaking genius. I worried about him then. I wouldn't do it. She's a disguise of this guy's an imagination. Oh no, I'm guessing something happened in the cannery. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focus. Not so much like focus, my dude. Whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising. And suddenly out of nowhere he actually makes RuneScape. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topi. <laughs> he built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. So like this guy made a game more than anything else, dude. And songs for them to play. Okay, thankfully the, the fishes aren't so he frequent now. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the camp, but his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. held an election for men. To which I'm guessing he lost. <laughs> and he won. Ah, well, no. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. I can't crash the boats while I'm handling. Oh well, well, apparently my I uh, can't handle a barge, so I'm not allowed to drive in real life. Away from our reality. <laughs> yeah, don't about it. Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. I guess that's... He heard rumours of a... Handsome Queen. Interesting. Okay, this is intense. The Queen was on her own quest for... Sinister Serpents. Sinister Serpents. Oh no! The unfortunate Lewis is going to get trapped by the Serpinis. He followed the sound of her. Silver heart, man. Silver Electric heart. sitar? That's awesome. Like, what? <laughs> oh.
His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, this is when things get real interesting. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. A god. <clears throat> god Louisy. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping sand, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Damn. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Guessing he just oh, and then he elevated just out of the window. I still thought I could save him. Nope, he's gonna become a king. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Not gonna lie, this tune is pretty catchy, and if you wise calico and insisted on advising end up being in this mission for too long, you probably end up having it stuck in your head too. Your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Damn. Wow. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. So it is now dawn and and Edie, or Eddie, the, uh, the grandmother. That's, uh, shoot.
So this that poor guy had ended up on getting back from Lewis's funeral. My mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell you. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stay. But I understand why we left. Well, yeah. Literally, one by one, they all fell. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. I'm not actually too sure what happened to Sanjay, so I guess we'll find that out in, mom in her mom's room. That's not how we do it because we need to go and find out what happened to Dawn. And we unfortunately have left a big chunk of that out, which apparently doesn't actually completely guide you through what needs to be seen. Or maybe Dawn is deemed an irrelevant kind of fixture point to the fixture point of this uh, story. So far, shoot, this has gotta be one of the most heart wrenching walkthrough stories I've probably ever had to go through. Lewis has got to be the probably the most tripped out of one of them all. Obviously, the most saddest one has to be little baby Georgie. You know, out of ever everything, even though it's played in such an upbeat manner, that was a uh... yeah. It's going to be very difficult me to try and get back up all the way through this house. Just to get there. No, don't go back that way. Look, look, Edith, look, look, love, you need to go. You're 22 weeks pregnant, all right? Stop being stupid. Yeah, now there's a ladder. No, no. no you're lucky that I can't actually purposely commit suicide. Or as I would quite happily just ram you off the edge. Right, can you now just get down? Thank you. For love Jeebus. And everything is holy. But yeah, I just have to say, so far this is... Even though this is literally a, probably around about maybe a two hour game maximum. Because obviously sometimes you could end up m missing out or messing up certain parts of it. Especially when... You know, you're kind of having to swing your, your legs around and stuff like that. Or just random parts of the uh, the story that kind of like drag on a little bit too much. Because, uh, oh, I'm guessing she probably has to go down anyway. I'm not sure. Oh, well, definitely slow but surely making our way through this. Oh, doing a load. But yeah, it's definitely a different kind of, of, of horror in comparison to Soma. Soma has you kind of like, you know, running for your life and it's very much of a, you know, kind of wears you out quite a lot as a, as a player to kind of like constantly keep having to keep one step ahead or trying to run away from X, Y or Z or, you know, something like that to happen. Dude, I'm literally, I should have probably seen Dawn stuff. Unless, I, I'm going to be a little bit miffed if I've magically, you know, managed to completely bypass a certain area. Okay, I can't go back that way. So am I actually left now to just go towards... Oh, whoops, okay, pressing triangle just means we get back into here.
All right, shoot. Okay, so it looks like I actually have missed out a room. I guess we're gonna have to go back through that myself then at a later date. Dang, fair enough. Oh, my bad, guys. Dragging this out a little bit longer than it needs to be. But yeah, this is definitely, uh... Definitely something. Or maybe both K and Sunji... Don't mean very much towards the story? Because K doesn't have much of uh, a say in either. K just obviously... Got divorced from Sam. And as a result, she's kind of disappeared, and Sanji is, is, is the father of Edith, but you can kind of see that they're, they're, they're like the fallen leaves, so maybe they've already departed from the family tree, and possibly uh, Dawn's theme tree with the Dawn's story would have probably been a little bit more um, like filling on that. Maybe they could have, uh, probably would have told us a little bit more about what happened but shoot yeah this is uh definitely for a for a different kind of horror this is this is pretty dang good and a nice little breath of fresh air in comparison to constantly going you know oh oh crap oh, oh shit shit fuck and then you run away from whatever is chasing you because they seem to be you know in the soma they had they had incredible speed behind them incredible speed behind them Alright. Okay, I'm back up there. Milton, Milton potentially still lives. It's very uncertain where he went. Apparently he escaped through the door and that was it really. He he must have ran away, but did he? Did he drown? Did he kind of, you know, misadventure of somewhere? Did the architects grab him? I say for a room though, this is one very cool room. I wouldn't mind grabbing some of the artwork that uh that Lewis had on on his walls. Well Here you have it. That final day, that final night, that final end to the fateful tale. The one that robbed Edith of her. Of her innocence. Oh, there's pretty practically, like, a reference to everyone. Of her family members. In this room, alone. Which is, I think that's pretty cool. I thought she was about to carve this into her arm, then I was like, bruh. That whole last day, Edie just watched his pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edie, specific. I left a present for you in the hall. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. <laughs> hmm. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom said the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. Hence the, uh... The little bit of, um... Little present in the hallway. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know this story. My children are dead because of your story! I think it's best 
If Edith and I leave tonight, we'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. History of inches. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you. There's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There had been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They mm. called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled. <laughs> I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog mm. rolled in, I lost my way. No, you didn't. You know exactly where it is. I got turned around. Unless you magically turned yourself around, I know it's in this general direction. For a while, I wonder. As you do. Out in the ocean I bed. I started seeing things. Special kind of fog boys. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. Yeah, she's actually turning herself when around. I saw them. They felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Oh, frail. I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw great-grandma Edie again. Heartbreaking. She was already gone. She probably walked back into the house, the old house. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. Sick a lot. <coughs> well, well, the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is.
This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. I'm guessing, unfortunately. I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Yeah, she died during childbirth. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Damn. I guess you found out what happened to to mother. Wow. So I guess with that comes the end of this very sorrowful tale. The one of misfortune. A one of a possible sort of story that was just already foretold in the stars if history was repeating itself and Barbara was killed then you had Walter obviously unfortunately stumbling into the real world in the pursuit of finding out that the, 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 the demon that was knocking on his door which was his train passing it every day at 12pm Georgie unfortunately sliding into a bath that overfilled. And Sam's hunting accident and obviously Lewis's hallucinations that in the end cost him his life. Dawn's cancer and unfortunately Edith's tragic, tragic death during childbirth. I like how the ending is kind of bringing all the kids sort of pictures in, I'm guessing from anyone who was working on this. And how the credits also coincide with all of the kids' toys and everything as well. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's probably something that I wouldn't recommend you as an audience buy because there's only really one sort of way that this will play out anyway. There's not very any sort of replayable value. The stories are pretty cut and paste, they're 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 done. But thank you very much for joining me on the tale of what's left of Edith Finch. I hope it isn't too depressing or you guys are now currently hitting all time low. Serotonin levels are dipped completely. Well, I do hope you guys have a brilliant night and I'll hopefully see you again with another episode. I have got a few more enchanted to do, so I may have to do those. Or I may throw up some Street Fighter instead for good measure. Just so you can see me getting clapped every now and again. As it has always will be, my name is Raphael Darkheart. Please keep your sword sharp and your wits about you. It's dangerous on the hunt. <laughs>